Hi all, Kraken Latte here. So, in part 4, we covered the intense topic of getting all the professions covered, as well as the special ones with masteries, across your new alt army. That can be done whether you've leveled them or not, and this topic is like that as well. I had a tough time coining the term for this topic, so we'll call it foundational maintenance. To put it simply, this topic is just making a checklist for yourself on what you need to do on every single alt. I don't mean leveling or quests, I mean quality of life, simple type things that don't require a lot of effort. So let's look at my list and you'll see what I'm talking about. Alright, so first let's dig into the super simple stuff. Bags, banks, and void storage. If I know I'm going to keep a character, the first thing I do is go grab some big bags and put them on. If you've played WoW well for longer than a few hours, then you know how frustrating it can be to constantly hit max inventory space. In this case, I like the 30 slot bags, which come in three options of Hexweave, Deep Sea, and Shrouded Cloth, so I just buy whatever's cheapest at the time. Then I'll mosey on over to the bank and open up all seven bank slots and put 30 slot bags into those too. Total, you'll need 11 bags. Four for you and seven for the bank. And don't forget to unlock the materials tab too. After that, I go have a chat with our ethereal friends and open up the void storage. Yes, I do use this still as it's great for storing keepsake items that you don't need cluttering up your bank. Void storage can hold anything that's not stackable or labeled as unique, so long as it's soulbound. This even includes some of the old legendaries. With that out of the way, now we need equipment. I don't mean gear, I mean mount equipment and items we'll keep in our bags. My favorite mount equipment is the comfortable Rider's Barding. This prevents you from being dazed and dismounted by mobs, which is a must-have for me since I find that feature extremely unwanted. Now as for what I keep in my bags, I have a few things to talk about. First, Goblin Gliders. I don't care what level I am, every alt has these and I even put them on my bars for quick access. You don't want to die to a uh, fall damage, do you? That's just embarrassing. I also have Deep Home Potions. These are like a second instant hearth and can be used once you're level 31. Obviously, mages don't need these, but every other alt I have does. Ultimate Gnomish Army Knife. This only goes on my main crafting profession holders because this little item subs in for every crazy tool that you need including the enchanting rod, the tool crafting chest, blacksmithing hammer, arc light spanner, and a lot more. It covers all of them. Thermal Anvil. I keep this on miners, blacksmiths, engineers, and jewel crafters. This item is a portable anvil which doubles as a forge for smelting. Super handy for smelting on the fly. I'm sure you see my hearthstones in here too. I make sure to get both the garrison hearth and the Dalaran hearth on all my alts both of which are super easy to get. And as a side tip, you can actually delete your regular hearth if you have any of the hearthstone toys, because these do the same thing even if you delete the physical hearthstone itself. So that's one more bag slot you can have. For the garrison hearth, you have to open your garrison, but that takes like 10 minutes or less. To get it, you don't have to do the expansion intro, so you can just hop over to your garrison area and find Velen or Thrall down by the shore where your shipyard goes, and then begin the quests. Just a few quests in and you'll have it, though I do recommend getting the garrison itself in shape. I'll have a video on how to do all that later. And then for the Dalaran hearth, you can either do the little intro, skipping the scenario of course, or just head straight there with the Azuna portal. You have to be higher level to do that last part though. If you've done the intro and you don't have that stone for some reason, go talk to the innkeeper in the ledgerman and ask for a new one. You can technically do this on a low level who hasn't done the intro too, but your hearthstone won't work until you do or hit level 50. It's a little silly. And of course, the flight master's whistle. This thing is nice if you're doing any world content in Legion or BFA. You can get one when you activate the world quests in Legion or BFA, which you should also do both of those once you hit level 50. Getting back down to basics with equipment, I make sure each alt has a shirt and a tabard equipped even if I mog them invisible. I'm prone to making random mog sets on the fly and I want to have all options available since you can mog these slots as well. Gotta be prepared, you know. 
You should also make sure you have the highest riding license for your level. At level 40, you can have all of them, including max flying, which includes being able to fly in Draenor and the Broken Isles. So that's a must if you want to do any farming at all. Now for a little more technical, I like to get all my specs set up so I can swap on the fly if needed, even at level 10. If you're a class with multiple roles like tank or healer, I certainly make sure that I have both tank and healer roles set up. Even if that alt mains DPS and I never plan to use the other two. Speaking of DPS, if it's a DPS only class, I tend to ignore that rule since they don't have other roles available, and I just keep the one DPS spec I want to play set up. Of course, the topic I probably should have started with is your UI. It would be wise to get all the UIs on all your alts set up now, preferably right after you've made them so you don't have to think about it later. I have done a series on my own UI, so those links are in the description. And with UI means add-ons. Getting all my add-ons in order before I begin anything is a must for a more pleasant experience. If you're curious about what add-ons I recommend for alt armies specifically, I already did a video on that, linked down in the description as well. I will point out in light of specs, classes, UIs, and add-ons on your alts, this is when my favorite add-on shines. Action Bar Profile Saver. This one is included in both my alt add-ons and UI videos, so I won't elaborate, but it simply saves your class and spec setups into profiles, including talents and macros, that you can load on other characters. Since I have a lot of alts, this is a serious must-have for me. Major time saver. Okay, that was complicated, so back to something more basic. I also like to pick both ground and flying mounts for all my alts. Simple as that. So I put those on my bars in advance, even if I can't fly yet, since I have designated buttons for those. I think this part's fun. Similarly, I like to mog all my alts as soon as they're level 10, so I can look snazzy. You can do this earlier, but you can mog into anything you want from vanilla to BFA once you hit level 10. Shadowland stuff is 50 plus, most of it anyways, so. Circling back to the topic of garrisons, I forgot to mention that I do also like to get my Mage Tower slash Spirit Lodge to rank 3 and unlock the portals for it. How to do that will be included in the garrison video I plan to do later. And the final item on my list is the one I actually never get around to doing, and that's opening Sunsong Ranch in Pandaria. I don't actually remember how to unlock it, and I'm often too lazy to go look, so if you want a video on the ins and outs on that, let me know, because you and I will both be learning in this scenario. And I think that's everything for this topic that I can remember at the moment. Got anything you want to add? Feel free to share! And there we have it! I beg you to like and comment on this video as doing both kicks the YouTube algorithm into high gear and gets my videos recommended more. Being totally honest with you, I want to make this my full-time job, so your support means I can keep bringing you Coffee Field content. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.